Hey guys, I'm back with a whiteboard and zero drawing skills and six years after the first draw of my life, I'm still alive. <laughs> so I might as well keep going. We left things in 2013 when little did I know I was about to go on a life changing adventure I never dreamed would happen. I'm attempting to draw myself riding on a unicorn into the sunset here. Is that a metaphor? Is the unicorn YouTube? I don't know. And you, <laughs> and you may think you know this story, but I'm going to hit you with all the behind the scenes juice. Jeez, that sounded gross, sorry. Also, if I could edit the last one and just add in, P.S. I was gay. <laughs> I would, but more on that later. So, I just moved to London with Dan, very exciting, but also five times more expensive than Manchester. That's the queen taking our money. It was so, it's kind of terrifying, sorry. It was so pricey, we had to take a risk on this weird internet job and spend our entire life savings on a year of rent. And if that didn't result in us having some kind of career, we'd both have to say, oh well, we tried. And move back in with our parents with literally zero money and a student loan, so like, negative a lot. Thankfully, we just landed a show on BBC Radio 1, which was such a huge deal. Not only were we the first people from the internet to get a show with the BBC, but our show was super ambitious, incredibly fun, but also very anxiety inducing. I'm proud of a lot of that work we did, as I think we were really good at it, but boy did we get thrown in the deep end. The producers wanted me to learn to press all the buttons to operate the show, while speaking fluently and choosing text from viewers, but the radio desk looked like a freaking spaceship. You've never seen so many buttons. And if you've seen me try and walk in a straight line, my brain and body aren't good at coordinating. So one time I fully pressed the wrong button and the whole show got thrown off the air for over a minute. It was literal cricket noises on the radio. That was the longest minute of my life. Thankfully, we didn't get fired and they let Dan take control of the buttons from then on. Wise decision. And I relaxed a bit on the radio. I don't regret any of this, but it did age me by about five years. A few months later, I hit 1 million subscribers on YouTube. Woo! That was such a huge milestone for me as it showed this thing I'd been doing since 2006 had fully taken off. I made the decision that this was my life now. I was a full-time internet entertainer. Internet entertainer? In- inter- enter- entertainer? Internet? I don't know. The radio show continued to get bigger and better. We were doing cool things like interviewing Fallout Boy. Okay, <laughs> this is meant to be Fallout Boy. I don't know what's happening. That's meant to be a guitar. That is not a guitar. Oh my god, how do you draw a guitar? What does a guitar look like? You know what I'm getting at. And we even got an agent. Okay, that's a secret agent, but you get the idea. Who got us even more jobs. It's funny though, I never dreamed of being a presenter when I was a kid. And not having much money at the time, I thought this was my opportunity to say yes to everything. Literally, whenever something came into the inbox, I was like, yep without considering what that would entail or how much time it would take. Phil, do you want to present at this film premiere? Yep. A YouTube spawn? Yeah. Brit Awards? Sign me up. Phil, go push past this crowd of people and grab Ed Sheeran on the red carpet even though he looks super busy. Okay. Stand on stage at this festival and introduce Imagine Dragons without a working microphone. Yee. A week-long outdoor shoot in exchange for exposure? Sure. Just let me tickle you and buy your channel. Yeah, uh, uh, I said no to that one. My anxiety around this time got really bad as I was juggling too much. I was working so hard, I wasn't getting any sleep, and I was worrying about not getting anything done the next day. That's me juggling responsibilities, which look a bit like a lemon, apparently. Is there some kind of <laughs> metaphor about life and lemons here? I don't know. During this exciting work tornado, something else happened as a bolt from the blue that really shook me. I had a phone call that I needed to come home as there was news about my dad's health. I was asking what it was, but they just told me to come home and talk about it. I knew it would be cancer before they even told me really. Why wouldn't they just tell me on the phone otherwise? It turned out that my dad had a very rare form of blood cancer. Though we never used the C word much in our house, he was so upbeat and determined to fight it, you'd think he was just suffering with a bad cold or something. He was really sick for over a year and had to have chemo and a full stem cell transplant in isolation, which can be pretty dangerous in itself. I did give him my Netflix though. It was so hard to deal with this while doing so much work in front of a camera. I was conflicted too, as obviously I wanted to drop everything and move back home, but he said it would be better if I continued doing these amazing things in London and that would be more of a boost than if I was just moping around the house. So factoring in a lot of visits, I stayed in London and thankfully he started to get better. He was given an experimental drug and it's really working as he's still in remission five years later. I've never mentioned this as I don't really talk about much personal stuff on YouTube and my dad's quite a private person, but let me tell you guys as now he's feeling great and he's enjoying retired life with my mum and watching my anime recommendations. Yeah, my dad watches anime. Okay, I know I'm meant to be just drawing, but seriously, look how cute they are. 
I can't. Dan and I started to realize around this time that while we were getting lots of jobs doing other stuff, that the internet was the future. And really some of these people that we work for were getting more from us than we were from them. After some experiences of doing some things out of obligation rather than passion, and not being able to fully create things how we wanted to, we knew it was time for a change. To fully focus on realizing these dreams, we decided to stop doing the radio show and all of the stuff and put everything we had into the internet. We got a new team that was more about the internet than TV, and this is when we started to dream big. To celebrate this whole Dan and Phil thing going on and all the jokes and stories we shared with our audience, we decided to make a Dan and Phil book. And not just a regular book, of course we had to do something special and unique, but a creative explosion of stories and photos and drawings and games that we felt perfectly represented us. And this felt like the perfect moment to go on tour and see the viewers that had supported us in real life. This came at a weird time as people were super cynical about YouTubers doing projects, no. which made us sad as we were genuinely passionate about it. And for me, telling stories and being funny and inventing games was what made me the happiest. I just wanted people to give us a chance and realized that what we were doing was all us, had 100% of our effort behind it, and was actually great. Neither of us realized how hard this would be as we decided we were doing everything our way now. No one was telling us what to do or what to change, which was great, but that meant we had to make every decision. And when booking a whole world tour, let's just say for us and our new team, there was a lot of office work we didn't sign up for. This was an experience that made us realize, even if we knew the internet was a big deal, most of the world didn't take it seriously. There were so many theaters that wouldn't let us hire them as they didn't know what a YouTuber was and they just thought nope. no one would turn up. Which was frustrating as them not getting it meant there were places that we couldn't go and as the first YouTubers to do a tour this big we basically had to break the ice ourselves to let everyone come through. Sorry for this weird human boat analogy but you get the idea. In a way this was scary and it felt like when we first moved to London again especially as we'd put all our savings into this stage show even the money from the book so if it didn't work out we'd be doomed again. Doomed. I've never been as nervous as the day the books were sent out into the world and we hopped in a van to go on tour. Would people like the things as much as we did? Was it all worth the risk? Or have we just destroyed everything? Thankfully, someone did buy a ticket. In fact, 100,000 people did. And the book was a number one bestseller. We couldn't believe it. We were so happy and relieved. And the fact that we were doing it our own way and it was all a celebration of this world of Dan and Phil on YouTube made it extra special. The fact I actually went on huge stages around the world was kind of an insane experience for me. As other than a couple of conventions, I've always been a bit of a shy person, preferring small groups to huge social events. But as I was so proud of this show we'd made, the shyness completely disappeared. The audience was so encouraging and everyone just felt like a group of friends. And despite <laughs> yeeting myself off the stage in Florida, it went pretty much perfectly. It also also really affected me meeting so many of you and hearing the stories of how my videos had brightened up your days or got you through the hard times or sometimes even really inspired people that related to my life which made me realize how special this was even if I didn't know it. This looks like a happy hill. I <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I was trying to be sentimental and I ruined it with the drawing. We had to do some press to promote the book and the tour, which was my first proper experience with that world, and it was a back sweat inducing experience. As not only was I an awkward nerd, but I was still publicly and to my extended family in the closet, and I felt like a few of the reporters just wanted to talk about dating and sexuality, and half of the questions were about liking girls or hot female celebrities. I don't know what female celebrities I just drew, by the way. They were also still obsessed with the fact that a YouTuber was even a job and all they cared about was money. We wanted to talk about how amazing the story of our journey is and how exciting our show was with its crazy creative story. But they were just like, someone has a job on internet? Cat videos make money? What is this? One time I ended up in a super awkward photo shoot experience where they made me balance my legs on a disco ball in, <laughs> in tight jeans as the photographer sat on the floor and shot the photo from a crotch perspective and asked me to look more sensual. No thanks. Thankfully the press is way different in 2019 as at least some of the people working for magazines and websites actually understand the internet now and are more interested in talking about what matters. You know, side note, I'm really enjoying drawing. I, <laughs> I haven't drawn anything in ages. Here is a seal with wheels concept. <laughs> okay, <laughs> sorry, where was I? As if we weren't doing enough, come on guys, we felt like we wanted something else on the side, so we decided to combine our passions for YouTube and sitting on the couch shouting at each other playing video games and made a gaming channel. I think our Sims series was the biggest hit. We created Dil Halter and living out his disastrous but weirdly relatable life was some of the most fun I've had on YouTube. Or a game. 
We never realized how much work it would be because I think it's normal for most gaming YouTubers to just upload a one take recording, while for us we wanted to make it like a traditional YouTube video with zooms and effects and a million edits to make the gaming videos as good as a regular one. Even though we had so much fun filming it, we sometimes bit off more than we could chew, like deciding to do a video every day leading up to Christmas one year had us awake until 4am most nights of December, including Christmas Eve. I like to think that Undertale Let's Play was worth it, sorry and thanks for that Dan. This tatting off era of life lasted for basically two years and when we finally returned from the war, our lives felt totally different. We had certain priorities at this point, like moving out of our first London apartment that had an actual gas leak. Seriously, how didn't we die? And then the big question of what's next? Well, not to be doom and gloom, I don't want to bust out the sad music, but 2017 was very sad and death heavy in my family. We lost my grandma and my auntie in the same month. I didn't really talk about it online at the time, as I wanted my online presence to be something you guys can come to to forget your worries, rather than taking on mine. And while this was all going on, it made it harder, as on the outside it just looked like I wasn't planning anything new, when in fact I was trying to work on stuff at the same time. When you're working on something, you don't want to be annoying and be like, secret project coming in three months. It's better to wait until you have something interesting to share, or just Beyonce it. The problem is, when you suddenly announce it, some people will think it was just an easy breezy task that just magically appeared. It is never a breezy task. This made me realize that people only know what's happening in your life if you're talking about it online, as there's so many daily vloggers and people that share the most intimate juices of their life, sorry for saying juices again, and seeing everything in that person's life is totally normal. So when I'm keeping what I'm going through or working on in private, it can seem from the outside like nothing's happening at all. And sometimes I wish people knew that I was having a hard time with my family or overwhelmed with work. Like one time we spent ages planning a Dan and Phil travel series that we spent months working on. We had a whole crew assembled, we pitched it to people and it was ready to go when the people that commissioned it said their plans had changed and we'd have to wait a year to film it, which totally clashed with all our other plans and we just had to let it go. So yeah, I guess there is more to life than what someone's posting on social media and you never really know what someone is going through or what they're working on. Whilst this year was hard in many ways, I was still very thankful for the good fortune and having these opportunities at all because two of those secret projects did make it into the world. Most amusingly, Truth Bombs, which came from a party game I'd made my friends play on pieces of paper when we were hanging out, and it became a real board game you could buy in the shops. This was one of those things that took months of planning and designing and testing, but the fact my silly paper party game is now enjoyed by so many people all over the world is unbelievable to me. Also, sorry if you play it and you ruin your relationships. Around this time, Dan and I, working with my brother Martin, also started our first business, IRL merch. That shook the camera like we were, <laughs> we were celebrating that we made it. Martin knew everything about making websites and online shopping, and as two people that love a good fandom and spending all our money on Game of Thrones mugs, Dan and I thought YouTuber merch could be so much better than just a basic t-shirt. So after making our own Dan and Phil shop, we wanted to help other YouTubers make their own snazzy websites and realize their dreams with really cool stuff like plushies and candles and backpacks and more. This business went from my brother's laptop to having actual employees and an office and a warehouse as part of a worldwide team making incredible things for creators. So thanks for that idea, bro. And not only is Martin amazing at the job, but I love that I get to spend so much time with my brother and drag him into this weird world with me. P.S. Cheeky spawn. I have some space themed merch at the moment, so you should grab some if anything takes your fancy. So much has happened, I feel like I've probably forgot loads of important things. Uh, we made an app. We had a cameo in a Disney movie that won an Oscar. I only had one line, but I like to think it was based on my performance. That's my acting voice, apparently. And now we started to think about the rest of our lives. Not that the end of our lives was coming up soon, sorry. <laughs> that sounded dramatic. I meant that in an exciting, what is my dream in life kind of way. I had unfinished business though. This Dan and Phil thing meant so much to so many people. And whilst our first tour was huge, there was loads of people around the world that never got to see us. So we decided before anything else, in one massive quest, we would try and go to as many countries in the world that would actually let us in. Thankfully this time around, everyone knew what a YouTuber was, so we booked shows everywhere from Helsinki to Mumbai. There were still a couple of countries that didn't want to let us in, probably because Dan's face is so suspicious. And we thought, hey, if this tour is just about giving the audience what they want, then we should make the whole thing interactive. And so Interactive Introverts was born. By this time we thought the show was so good, we decided, hey, why not just go back to all the places we went on the first tour so no one misses out? And it was a tour, on a tour, on a tour. It was a giga tour. And thus we began our seven month Hobbit there and back again adventure doing 80 shows without coming home for months. I could honestly do an entire video just about this summer. So get the DVD, it has a two hour commentary on it. 
<laughs> Much more important though, sometime in the middle, I snipped off my emo fringe, as despite everyone loving it and it being in all the photos promoting the show, oops, I decided it was what I wanted, so I went and bloody did it. I even got a pair of ripped jeans big character progression. It wasn't all sunshine, literally. We had to do a show with no electricity, hashtag Dan and Phil unplugged. We narrowly avoided a typhoon and we had some big issues getting into Manila, which cost so much we actually ended up spending our own money in Asia rather than making any. But it was a grand adventure and we achieved what we set out to do, to see as many of you as possible and have a great time, which made it all worth it. We got home and we were actual zombies, as you could probably see in the mukbang video. This is a terrifying drawing, I don't know what I was thinking. I actually think we might have pushed ourselves slightly too far with this one, as I felt like I had unlimited energy, but it's not until you stop you realize your body needs to fully hibernate. We didn't exactly rest, we spent three weeks editing the DVD of our show, which involved watching one performance thousands of times like a never ending Groundhog Day nightmare that was also, ironically, one of the most fun and proud days of our careers. So by the time Christmas arrived and another gaming must ending in an elderly Sims retirement, I also felt ready to crawl into a cave like a bear and not talk to anyone for two months, unless they were offering me food, obviously. So if you've been paying attention, hey, get back to this tab. Don't you like my beautiful art? You might have realized that this chapter of Draw My Life has been incredibly work-related. Where's all my fun stories about the things in the rest of my life? Well, Turns out I don't really have one. Obviously this career has given me so many incredible adventures and experiences I could never have dreamed of, but outside of it I suddenly realized how lame I am. I prioritized work so much. I stopped making friends. I only have about four in London that actually want to hang out and I've got no real hobbies except for exhaustedly plonking myself in front of a video game after writing emails till 5am. And I didn't do any normal stuff people would do like getting a house or a dog for dog's sake. I think the next project should be to give myself a more well-rounded existence. Project Sphere. <laughs> the Sphere is me. I am the Sphere. Do you think there's a flat sphere conspiracy? I'm sorry. We both realize you don't need to say yes to everything. It's up to me how much work I want to do in order to secure my future, but there should be a balance so at the end of the day, you're still happy. This was like the clouds parting to reveal a new land. I like to think this world was in the Jurassic period. For the first time in my life, I felt like I could breathe a bit. I wasn't afraid of risking everything and having to move back into my parents if I failed. No offense, fam. So what next? We both wanted to have a think about what was next for us and Dan began another epic quest of his own to make a 45 minute long video. So we decided to pause the gaming channel, which we knew would upset people who love it as much as we do, but we had to hope they would understand why. The thing is, most people love Dan and Phil games just for being funny and the couch banter rather than hardcore gaming skills action. So I think if we did feel like having that thing on the side again, maybe it could transform into something new in the future. But on the other hand, I think that Final Sims video was definitely a perfect ending if it is. As Dan and Phil, we definitely feel like we've done every genre of big project we could do together over this five years, apart from maybe a cookbook, but we all know how much of a disaster that would be. So while we love creating together and we'll continue to pop up together on YouTube for more classic content, maybe for the next secret big project, it's time for Philly to think about the big dreams he's always had. Sorry, I don't know why that went into third person. Hopefully it won't go into fourth person. But before anything else, there was something I needed to do. I just came out as gay, which still feels slightly weird to say out loud on YouTube. A thing meeting my audience made me realize is sometimes sharing personal stuff can help others. So to do that and feel comfortable myself talking publicly about parts of my life going forward, I decided to make a YouTube video about it. This also involved telling some of my extended family beforehand, and this thankfully was a very positive experience. But when I read the reaction down in the comments, it really warmed my heart and gave me hope for the future of humanity. So thanks. <laughs> And here we are now, 2019, making another YouTube video, which I still love doing. It's funny, as I started YouTube as a place to be creative and tell stories, some particularly weird ones back in the day, and it's almost like I'm coming full circle. Whether it's a horror movie with my friends or an interactive space adventure, what I've always dreamed of doing is writing stories and directing films to take what's in my mind and share it with the world on your screen. Maybe even a bigger screen. Now remember the rule of secret projects. Who knows what's going on and if it'll ever be real, but let's just say some writing is happening. Either way, I'm still here doing something I love and I'll keep sharing stories from my weird life and my strange mind for as long as people want to hear. Well, actually, even if nobody is listening, I might just keep going anyway, as that's what I was doing when I started. Because I'm just doing what makes me happy. And the fact that it's taken me on so many adventures and made so many people happy is the best part of my life, so. Thank you. And there we go. Maybe I'll see you again for another one of these via a futuristic whiteboard in your mind in 2025. 
if the Earth still exists. You can subscribe to my channel to see all my new videos on the way, give this a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, and you can check out my last Draw My Life in the description if you want to go even deeper into those filled juices. Sorry, <laughs> I promise that was the last one. Goodbye!